So today we're going to be solving a beam problem uh, and looking to derive an equation for the elastic curve. Uh, so we've got the, the beam laid out on uh, the sheet. Uh, it's got a uniformly distributed load between the pin supported A and the roller supported B. And then there's an overhang uh, where it has a point load at the end of that overhang at point C. So we've gone ahead and we've solved for the uh, reaction. So taken the free body diagram, uh, applied our equations to static equilibrium, uh, got the reaction forces, and then went on to use the graphical method to get the shear force and bending moment diagram. So, so now we're going to use the method of successive integrations to uh, derive an equation for the elastic curve. So the first thing we have to do is because of where the support is at B is we're actually going to have a discontinuity uh, there in the moment diagram, which of course we can see uh, below. So we're going to have to break our beam into two different sections uh, in order to get there. So let's start. We're going to look at initially section AB. In section AB, we're going to have to do up a, a partial free body diagram so that we can direct, use the direct method to uh, get an equation for the bending moment diagram. So I'm going to draw my beam in here. And basically, we're going from A, uh, X is positive, going in this direction. We have our support RAY. And of course, we have our uniformly distributed load. That's at two kilonewtons per meter. Uh, RAY is equal to 0 0.20 kilonewtons. What we're interested in is determining what our moment at X is, uh, which is the internal moment at any point X from A to B. So using the direct method, determine that M at X, and, we're, and we'll use a clockwise positive, 0.2 kilonewtons times the distance X minus two kilonewtons per meter over X over which it's applied, multiplied by its moment arm, which is X over two. And we'll simplify that to get X squared or negative X squared plus 0 0.2 X. Now I'm gonna go ahead and right beside it, I'm going to look at section BC. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing, only this time I'm going to go from right to left. So we need to do our partial free body diagram. We'll do it in. In this case, I'm going to define our distance from right to left as L minus X. Put in our point load at the end, and of course is eight kilonewtons, and all of that is going to cause an internal moment m at x. And we'll go right ahead, do our sum of the moments to get m at x. And that's equal to negative eight kilonewtons times the length minus X, the length is eight meters. And that simplifies to eight X minus 64. So the Next step, and we'll jump back here to section AB, we're basically going to run them both down in parallel, is we know that EI D2V by DX squared is equal to our moment. 
So we'll make that equal to negative x squared plus 0.2x. And now we're just going to do two successive integrations. So we'll have ei dv by dx is equal to negative x cubed over 3 plus 0.2x squared all over 2. And then we have to add in our constant of integration, which we will call c1 in this case. And then we will integrate one further time and get ei v is equal to negative x to the fourth all over 12 plus 0.2x to the third over 6 uh, c1x plus a second a constant of integration c2. So we're going to do those two successive integrations on section BC. So we'll do our substitution in. We have ei d2v by dx squared is equal to 8x minus 64. So ei dv by dx is equal to 8x squared divided by 2 minus 64x plus our constant of integration we have to carry on so we'll call this one c3 and ei v is equal to 8x cubed over 6 minus 64x squared over 2 plus c3x plus our last constant of integration c4. Now, just for references, I, I, what I will do is I'm going to reference the equations that we're going to use uh, just so you know what I'm talking about when I refer to it, make it a little easier. Because our next step, which is critically important, is to apply our boundary conditions as well as our sort of continuity compatibility equations, if you will. So a boundary condition, we're going to look at principally the supports, where we have some known displacement or known slope. And with, the, with that known displacement or slope, we can substitute, the, substitute those into one of our uh, equations that we've identified so that we can you know, solve for one of the constants of integration. The continuity or compatibility equations typically refer to the transitions between the different sections. So in this case, between section AB and section BC, where we have to have continuity uh, in displacements or slopes so that the beam doesn't have a kink in it. And so with that, we should be able to resolve for all of our constants of integration. So if I look at this, let's say boundary conditions, and I'm just going to call them all boundary conditions, but we've already discussed the nature of the different ones. And if I look at the support, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the support at A. So at x equals 0, we know that because it's pin-ended that the displacement must be equal to 0. So v is equal to 0. And that will be one of our boundary conditions. I also know that if I look at the other end of this segment at x equals 5, it's at a roller. And the displacement at that roller must also be equal to 0. So those are a couple of our obvious ones. Now, when we look at the section BC, we have couple things going on. So we can apply uh, compatibility basically to say that the displacement uh, at B in AB is going to have to equal to the displacement at B in BC. But we already know that that displacement very specifically is equal to zero. So we can just say that. So at x equals five, our displacement is equal to zero. But we also know that at x equals 5, the slope coming from AB must also be the slope going into BC. 
so that there's no discontinuity there. It's going to stay smooth, a smooth transition. So that really tells us that theta AB is equal to theta BC. And it's in applying these four boundary conditions or, or um, compatibility conditions or continuity conditions that we're able to resolve all of those constants. So this is a, a, a bit back substitution, substitute, back substitute, and we're just going to plug away at it until we can get anything. So I'm going to start and I'm going to substitute boundary condition one. And let me, I guess I should label these. I'll do. Again, this is just so that you understand what I'm doing. So I'm going to substitute one into equation one. So when we do that, we say x equals zero. So if I go up to equation one, I write that out. We're going to get a displacement equals zero, which multiplies through by EI. So that's zero. So V equals zero. And we substitute in X equals zero. So zero to the fourth all over 12 plus 0 0.2 multiplied by zero cubed. Zero plus C1 times zero. So those terms are all going to disappear, which means that we can show that C2 is equal to zero. And I'm just going to go up here and draw in a zero for C2. I'm going to carry on doing the same thing. I'm going to substitute boundary condition two into equa equation one. And so once again, we have a displacement of zero multiplied through by EI. And then we're substituting X equals five into our equation. So we have minus five to the fourth uh, divided by 12 plus 0 0.2 times five all cubed divided by six plus C1 times five. And just for pedantic sake, I'll say plus C2, but we know that that's equal to zero. And when we resolve this, we can determine that C1 is equal to 9.583. So now we go over to section BC. We've gotten rid of two of our constants of integration. And we can try this one. We can substitute 3 into equation 3. So substituting three boundary condition three into equation three. So this is that x equals five, displacement equals zero. So on the left side, we get a zero. And then that is equal to eight times five, all cubed, divided by six, minus 64 times five, all squared, divided by two, plus C3 times five, plus C4. So we still have two unknowns. So we're not quite ready to, to resolve one of our constants there. So let's carry on with our other condition. And we're going to substitute 4, our final one. And we're going to substitute that into equation 4, because it deals with slopes. And this deals with slopes. And to be fair, we also have to use equation two from section AB because this deals with both sides. So doing that, if we look over at equation two to start with, we have at x equals five, we have negative five all cubed divided by three plus 0 0.2 times 5 squared divided by 2 plus C1, which we know is 9.583, 
and then that has to equal, so our equation four then, eight times five squared divided by two minus 64 times five plus C3. And that allows us to solve for C3, which is equal to 190.42. And then all we have to do is to back substitute and we replace C3 with 190.42 and that leads us to C4, which is negative 318.77. And if we go up here, negative 318. 0.77 C3 190.42 and C1 we knew oh sorry not C1 wasn't zero C1 was 9.583 now Clearly, if I was doing this out uh, to hand in or, or something like that, I would simplify these equations, rewrite them nice and clean. But here you have them, our equations for the elastic curve. And if you're interested, you just go up 1, 9.583 and 190.42. Two, and they provide the equations for the slope of the beam at any point in X. And so that's it. That's uh, the method of successive integrations with a discontinuity at B broken up into two sections. Uh, we've uh, gone through the or used partial free body diagrams to get moment equations in each of those sections, use successive integrations to arrive at a equations for the elastic curves, albeit with constants of integration, and then used our boundary conditions and continuity conditions to be able to reduce those constants of integration back to known values. So hopefully this was uh, helpful to you, and uh, we'll see you at the next one.